Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive. You know, there have been three things that I have been wrong about. I admit it, you guys were right. You know, part of having a, a see-through channel is uh, admitting when you were wrong, and that's what I'm on here to do today. And I'm talking about three mods that I was really against and very skeptical of until I finally bit the bullet and purchased them myself and installed them in my truck. The first one are the seat jackers, or first ones. You know, this is something that I thought having the 10-way power adjustable seats in the Tacoma was not necessary. I mean, how could you need something when you have that flexibility or different angles with the seats um, when you have these adjustable power seats, right? But I discovered after having the truck for a while that I wasn't comfortable. I couldn't get comfortable. Even with the adjustable seat, I couldn't get the front part of the seat where I wanted it to be. It always seemed like it was just simply too low. So I went ahead, I listened to you guys reluctantly because these things aren't cheap, and I bought the seat jackers. Now I put them in and I've got to admit it's one of those mods that completely transforms the experience. You know, there's nothing worse than sitting in a truck, driving around and not being comfortable in it, especially when you think you should be because you have this adjustable seat option, right? So I put them in and instantly, I had more range of motion in that front part of the seat because I raised the seat up. My problem before was I couldn't get it high enough. So in raising it up, it gave me more motion, more range of motion to get it where I wanted it to be. And I'm probably about a half, maybe even a third as high as the seat will go in the front now that I have that inch and a quarter, I believe it was, difference. Love the product, gives me the seat that I expected to have because I always had an issue before, except it was with the back of the seat. It sat too low. I had to raise the back up so that it was more even. It's not really about height. It's not a height thing. I mean, I'm five foot nine and a half and I didn't have any issues with that. It was just the angle. It was fixed in the rear. I couldn't get it the way that I wanted. No more problems. I was wrong about the seat jackers. Definite must have mod for the truck if you can't get comfortable, even with the 10 way power adjustable seats. Next up is acceleration. Uh, you know, way back when I first figured out that it didn't take long, that the Toyota Tacoma had a lag, I started searching for ways to improve it. You know, changes to the throttle body, cold air intakes, things like that, that by the way, claim that they're gonna increase horsepower. And I thought, well, if I can increase horsepower, then maybe it'll give me the, the power, the acceleration that I want. Well, that really wasn't the problem. The problem wasn't that the engine doesn't have acceleration, it's that it's set up in such a way that you can't utilize it. It's throttled. So I bit the bullet once again, got the pedal commander, and what a difference. Completely gets rid of that throttle lag, which is its main purpose. It has other functions. There are, I think it's 36 functions, something like that. Uh, 30 different, 36 different settings. Even has an economy mode. You can save gas, which is not why I got it. I know it's a truck. I know it's gonna be thirsty. Eh, not really a big deal for me. But what a profound difference it's made. It makes the truck fun to drive. And I know there's still detractors out there. And of course, there are the folks that say, well, you should get a tune. I have a problem with tunes. You know, again, it's a personal decision. It's up to you. Spend your money and take your risks the way you want to. Whatever makes you comfortable. You know, one of the big things that I always say on this channel is never install a mod that you are not comfortable with. If you're comfortable with it, then do it. My problem with the tune, there's a few. One, it's more money. Two, it really is overkill for getting rid of throttle lag. I mean, if that's your only goal, Pedal Commander takes care of that. You don't need to go out and spend more money and change the brains of your truck. And that's my other problem, changing the programming in the truck. That's something that can cause other problems, can even cause warranty issues, depending on what maybe your warranty claim is. It's something that you can't change yourself. 
You know, Pedal Commander is a plug and play option. It does not scramble your truck's brain. There's no issues with messing something up and you can change the settings yourself. I don't have to be dependent on someone else, a tuner, to meet up and have it tweaked or changed because maybe I just really don't like the way that it is. You know, you never know until you drive a vehicle for a while. About a hundred years ago, I bought a Honda Civic Si. I loved it when I drove it off the lot. Two months later, I hated it. You couldn't get any power out of it until you were high in the power band, until the RPMs were screaming. Got rid of that car after three months. So for me, that's a great example of, you know, you have to experience it for a while. And if you don't like it, do you really want the hassle of having to track that person down, change it again, and maybe you won't like it the second time. You know, how many times are you gonna have to go through that dance before the tuner says, I'm not doing this anymore? Or they want to charge you more money to go ahead and uh, and redo it for you. Just not something that I'm interested in doing. But again, it's up to you. Tunes do do other things. They can change a myriad of other things in the truck. It's good, I guess, if you have problems with other things. I really don't. I was wrong. The Pedal Commander is awesome. I wouldn't have a Toyota Tacoma without one today. Next up is the intake. In this case, the K&N open intake. You know, I had a lot of people tell me that it made a difference, it changed the sound, which is what I was looking for. Two things, really. One, the aesthetics of having an intake under the hood. I just like the way it looks. And two, a throatier, more guttural sound. And you can probably hear it as I'm driving around. It's nothing overwhelming. It's nothing that's going to drive you nuts. There's no drone or anything like that like you get with a lot of the aftermarket exhausts which by the way I would probably stay away from if they bother you if drone is a problem or sound you can hear it right now I mean it's just a little bit more sound underneath the hood and I was skeptical you guys were right I said it's not going to do anything not going to hear any difference how could it how could it because I've had other intakes like the Air Raid that made a big difference on the on the Jeep that I have it on. Two different Jeeps, actually three different Jeeps. It's awesome. I wish there was a, an Air Raid cold air intake. And by the way, the difference, cold air intake is a sealed box that sucks cool air in through the fender or even the front. And an open intake just pulls air in from wherever it is that little slot in this case in the fender on the Tacoma as well as air from the front and under the hood. Love it. I was wrong. I admit it. It does make a profound difference and I'm very happy that I have it. Anyway, I just wanted to get on, run through those three things. You know, I think uh, if you're being honest, you have to be willing to admit when you're wrong and you guys were right. I was wrong. Those three things make a huge difference in the Toyota Tacoma. Leave a comment. Let me know if you've experienced any of them. Do you agree or not? I'd be curious to know. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.